The following is a presentation of GeekGamer.tv. It's time for Minecraft Me, the show that's all about Minecraft. From beginning level to expert, we'll show you what you need to know to survive in the world of Minecraft. With Joseph Falby and Chase Nunes, what's coming up on this episode? Coming up this week on Minecraft Me, we're going to talk to you about hoppers and droppers and how you can utilize them to move your goods and sort them all at the same time. Also, the Minecraft news of the week. We have our texture pack picks, take your questions and feedback, and we have a server showcase. All that and more on this edition of Minecraft Me, episode 78, recorded on Wednesday, June 5th, 2013. This episode of Minecraft Me is brought to you by Netflix Instant Streaming. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or Touch. All stream instantly by Netflix, saving you time, money, and hassle. For a free 30-day trial, including the new Netflix original series, House of Cards, go to netflix.com slash geekgamer. Audio engineering support is brought to you by Personas, makers of the Studio Live 1602. For more information, please visit personas.com. Hey everybody, welcome again to another edition of Minecraft Me, the show that is entirely about the game from Mojang called Minecraft. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, we like to show you how to play this awesome building blocks game. You know, it could be a, a texture pack that we're showing off for the very first time. It could be a neat mod, a trick, some advanced sorting techniques that, that deal with redstone and, and sorting. Uh, it's just so much fun to do this show. We hope you enjoy hanging out with us as we record these shows live. And if you can't make it live and you're downloading it, which most of you are, thank you and welcome. My name is Chase Nunes. I am the Level 7 Pig Rider, as voted on by you. And joining us, as always, it would not be a proper Minecraft me without this gentleman right here from the confines of Oregon, my good friend, guide, and uh, tutor, teacher, friend, robot guy, uh, model airplane pilot, Mr. Joseph Falby. Hey, Joe, how are you, sir? Uh, doing pretty good. Doing good. That's it? Just good? That's it. Nothing, yeah. nothing major? Well, I'm, I mean... I don't know. I I took some of my my RC plane stuff apart. This ah. is a receiver from a dead airplane. Um, okay. And uh, and I I have you can't see them. They're just off camera. Off over here. There's a whole box of a whole bunch of boxes of different airplanes stuff ah. like that. And earlier I was building a cat tree. I don't know if that counts as <laughs> interesting or not. So but, I gotta I gotta ask you uh, a question, Joe. Are are you yeah. ready uh, ready for this? You know what these are right? for for that? What uh what these what these, those these look are oh those are those Chinese. Uh, Hand massage balls now, that you roll now around. Now, if someone's your, watching, uh, you mean, look at this. I mean, that's talk about like getting inside of what's going on there. They can see fantastic. the camera. Refl- I didn't know we were going to break out, break out, uh, ball, giant ball bearings. I, I have a tube of like four of them. Giant. Over there. These aren't I giant. Use them, I, yeah, for, for, I mean, they're pretty good sized ball bearings. I mean, I use them in my pinball machines. I don't know what you use them I for, use them but, in my pinball machines as well. Oh, okay. Now, as you can okay. see here, I have two steel balls. Um, oh. Just I have to, like four over over there. Just to do a segue, they're, they're like, <laughs> just to tell people, uh, we're recording this on June fifth, and if you are in the Seattle metro area, Seattle Tacoma metro area, we encourage you guys to come on down this weekend. They're not paying for an ad. We're just fans, and we're actually going to be yep. there running a tournament. Uh, last one I'm running. I'm not doing it next year. I I just want to attend next year, Joe. I think I I just want to have fun. Uh, but next, uh, this ne- upcoming weekend is the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show. Over 350 machines are going to be on free play. If you were hanging out with us last week during the post show, we showed a trailer. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so if you're in the area and you want to come down and say hi, please do so. We'll be there all three days, and it'll be loads of fun. Uh, yeah. so and unlike PAX, you. you actually could get in if you just came up to the door. Ah. There's, you, you, the, the, there's the, It's not like sold out or anything. There's space for additional people. And actually, there's space for additional machines. I mean, they, they yeah, <laughs> this is a huge convention too. center. So yeah, uh, it's very nice, uh, easy parking, uh, much easier to get into than downtown Seattle, in my opinion. Uh, the only thing I'm not looking forward to is driving south through Seattle on a Friday 
with all the commute traffic. But other than that, I'm totally looking forward to it. I'll see Joe. Cameron will be there. I'm trying to convince John to come down. John doesn't know that he's coming. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I I think we need to call John tomorrow. That's what I think we need to do. I Why are we going to call him? Why are we not just Because you uh, yeah. you want to go directly to Tacoma. If you came up here, we could both just kidnap him. Why do we need both of us to kidnap him? We could kidnap him Friday. That's what I meant. We could just Never mind. A lot yeah, of Yeah, but I mean you you could kidnap him on the way down. Yeah. Or Friday night we go back up and kidnap him if we don't want to take him directly out of work. I say, Friday, taking him out of work might be better. He can't get out of work, but if we go directly to his job, he won't even know. Right. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. If we go there and tell everybody there, tell yeah. his boss, yeah. that he is busy here working for you instead of down helping and being an integral part of a team helping work a pinball through a pinball show, yeah. his boss will be like, get, get out. Well, you know the Just best. You know, you know the best thing is he's got. Mm. We got Google Latitude on him. So oh, we'll, yeah. we'll know if he's at work or he not. He can't even hide. He can't hide. Yeah. And he forgets about it. So we got to. He can run, but he can't hide. <laughs> we got to run very far in that car. <laughs> we have an awesome show for you guys lined up. Uh, this week, we have the Minecraft News of the Week, as we always like to go through. We have some really big news this week to talk about. Also, we have our Texture Packs picks. We have a really advanced Play It segment. So I know you guys like the advanced stuff. So we're going to show you. A really cool and innovative way. Yes, it costs a lot of materials, but it's really cool. Also, we have a server showcase of the week. And, of of course, we go through your questions every single episode, video, and written in the Minecraft Me inbox. So, Joe, I got to say. Did you mention texture packs? Yeah, I did. I said we got texture pack picks. I guess I was not paying attention. Where where were you? I was was over over there. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Over the- Whenever the camera's off, I'm unconscious. That's just right now. Joe's unconscious, and now he's back. See, hey, I'm back. Hey, there you go. All right. <laughs> hey, we got some news for you. The day you see season- No, it's not that news. It's time for some Minecraft news. Here we go. It's time for this week's Minecraft news. All right, time for some Minecraft news of the week. The the news that is fit to print. First story up on the docket, Minecraft Pocket Edition 0.7.0 has arrived. Yes, a lot of you guys have been waiting for this edition. One of the major components to this edition was that you would be able to create servers using the Realm service, the uh, the Minecraft Realm service. Uh, but that's not all. There were some also thing. Uh, there's some additional things added to this. New menus and a home screen. Buckets are now in the game. Milk and cake. Yes, now you can eat it too, is in there. You now get signs, uh, spawn eggs and fire. You get smooth lighting. There is now chat. Wow, you can actually talk to people. And uh, connected players' inventories are now saved on the server side. So, Joe, I know you talked a little bit uh, in the pre-show about the... We know it's There's an super alpha. secret hidden feature in this. Too. Yeah. The, oh, what's the super secret hidden feature? Super secret hidden feature is furnaces are broken. Ah, uh, don't then don't update. <laughs> so yeah, uh, basically, um, I, I, it's a super secret hidden feature. If you update, you will discover that furnaces are broken. So uh, if you can avoid it, don't update. If you've already updated, uh, well, your furnaces are broken. Congratulations. Uh, no. So uh, one thing about this is talks about is uh, according to a tweet by Johan. Um, the the realm service is not actually going to go live until next week at the earliest. Uh, they're still trying to work out some bugs, and even when it does go live, it should be considered an alpha right now. So it's not going to be very stable or reliable. We don't, we still don't have an affirmative word. At least I haven't been able to find one as to whether you're going to be able to host a server outside of the realm service for Pocket Edition. So it may be a subscription only based system where. You can only buy into a Realm server if you want to have a, a hosted server like that. You, you may not be able to host one yourself. I really hope that's not the way it goes because that's really backwards from how I like to think the guys over at Mojang believe, at least yeah. in, in terms of gaming. Right. Um, but again, Mojang is only really lending the name and the content to this. They're not building it. That's it's right. It's another company that's actually building just like on just the like Xbox. The, right. The Xbox version. Right. Mojang has creative control but they're not actually doing the this the actual making of this title so 
uh, as of right now or as of earlier, um, uh, I know it was on earlier today. It was on iOS first. It, it I, I hadn't heard if it hit Android or the Google Play Store yet. Right. I'm sure by the time you're watching this, if you're watching a download version, it's already out there, so you'll be able to get it. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah, it, it it seems like a cool update, except for that whole furnaces thing. Right. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to having cake. Um, you know, this is always cake. Yeah, and eating it too yeah you, did yeah. you get my joke anyway uh <laughs> no, i, ha- I had a joke and, uh, there. Uh, i've seen some really cool screenshots people have already posted yeah of, of burning stuff down with uh, <laughs> with fire uh with lava because they've they've been able to use a bucket to pick up lava and put it yep. somewhere else yeah really really cool stuff really interested to find out more about realms and how all that's going to work uh, i've already updated my phone so my furnaces are broken on pocket edition but they'll um, push out an update pretty quick. I mean, oh, yeah, they should be able fixes. to push out an update. Yeah. Usually a minor bug fix like that goes through the approval channels uh, with at least with the iOS store really quickly uh, within a, a day or two. Yeah. So so hopefully uh, we'll see a fix for that in a couple days here. And maybe next week or the week after we'll see some some realms info, some actual real hands on playing with realms. Now, those guys out there in the UK, and we love you guys for downloading and watching the show, you've missed out on a lot of Minecraft convention action. They, you know, they had the, the Minecon in Disneyland Paris, and then there was also one in Vegas. So, you know, the UK hasn't had any love, and there's a lot of, lots of great Minecraft players over there. Well, the Minecon organizers are going to be hosting a UK Minecraft Expo in August. Now, this is going to be just dedicated. Uh, there'll be a section dedicated to Minecraft, but this is going to be a part of the Insomnia 49 Festival. Uh, some of the cool things that are going to go down here is they'll have a 400 uh, 400 pound a 400 quid uh, prize pool, uh, which will be for cosplay competitions. Also, they'll have creative build challenges and a Minecraft lounge where you might see somebody from Yogg's Cast, Minecraft, Hat Films, Fire UK, or the Knox Crew, whom have pledged their attendance. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, I don't see Minecraft me on this uh, list, Joe. The Yogg's Cast, Minecraft, Hat Films, Fire UK, or the Knox. Joe, uh, um, we're we're not on this list. We got to get our PR person on it. Yeah. Um, what's a did PR we, person? Did, did, did we did we hire one with the gratuitous amount of money that the show brings in? Uh, wait. We can get them for like twenty five cents, right? Hold hold on. I don't I don't think I got that memo. Um, <laughs> hold on here. Uh, um, no, I don't have that memo. Oh, oh, you know what? We should have our community manager look into it. That would be John. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me let me get that. Uh, wait, we have a community manager. Well, John would be the closest, right? He's supposed to watch the chat room. He watched the chat room on Sunday evenings for like two hours. And barely. Well, that's 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 close. I mean, that's you know, that's true. This last time he was watching Netflix, uh, wasn't he? I I have a map here for the North Cascades. Perfect. Just uh, mail that to England. <laughs> as you guys can tell, <laughs> as you guys can tell, uh, we're not going. Yeah. Um, we yeah. have no money. I have no money, and now I'm jobless. So I definitely am not going to UK. Uh, that being said, if you want to send us over there, send a self-addressed stomped envelope with money inside to me. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, but no, it's really cool for all you UK guys out there. If I lived in London, I would definitely be going. It's going to be at the Telford International Centre, uh, August 23rd through the 26th. <laughs> now we know the real reason why Chase is not invited to Europe ever. Uh, uh, or, or Canada, because they do the same... <laughs> Oh, do they do? Yeah, they yeah, do. They do. Yeah, yeah they yeah. do. All right. Next news story. Let's talk about <laughs> Xbox on the 360. Um, uh, it is finally out there on disc in the 360 world. So at retail. So you can go down to Walmart, GameStop, Best Buy, Amazon.com, wherever you want to go. Uh, you can head out and grab this copy. It's $19.99. Now, the thing is... You're only going to get the most current version up to the when it was printed, which I believe is Title Update 11. Uh, now, this is good for those players who have no ability to go on Xbox Live and download. There's a lot of people out there who do not have connected Xbox 360s. So this would be a great gift for them to get them involved in Minecraft if they have no other way of doing it and they have an Xbox 360 edition. I would, hey, it's 20 bucks. You can get it to them. It's really cool. Uh, and... It's or it's already sold six million copies on Xbox Live Arcade, 
By the way, you guys in Japan, Australia, and New Zealand, it will arrive tomorrow on Thursday the 6th. It will arrive in Canada on June 25th, and it will release in the UK, France, and Spain on June 28th. So very cool. Uh, now it will be available in hard disk form, or you know, actual DVD form, I should say, and it'll be available. Why does it take an extra you. twenty days to reach Canada? Uh, it's it's usually a couple of reasons. First off, they have to, uh, you know, they have their own, um, you know, check of of disc content, you know, the ratings boards and that sort of thing. Uh, also, it has to go through localization. So I know, like for example, things that are sold in in Canada have to have yeah. English and French. Right, yeah, but that's, I mean, the like I'm, I'm talking like, about the packaging like, yeah, but, also has to have English and French. Uh, okay, okay, I, I guess, but uh, isn't Australia's review board for games supposed to be like the most stringent in the world? That's why it's taking a long time. It's going to Australia tomorrow. No, 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 no. Oh, did I say tomorrow? Tomorrow is Australia. Oh, yeah, and Japan Canada and New Zealand. Canada is the 25th. That's right. I don't yeah. understand why it takes an extra 20 days to reach Canada. I have no idea either. If you live, so so like 85% <laughs> of the Canadian population lives within so many miles of the U.S. border, right. just drive across the border, pick up a copy tomorrow, and drive back. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Why wait 20 days? And actually, That's games stupid. games are more expensive up there, so I don't even know it'll be nineteen yeah, ninety nine up there. It'll be like twenty four ninety nine or something. Even if it's like like five bucks worth of gas, look, you're saving twenty days and the money of buying the game because it's going to be cheaper down here. We're not uh, did advocating I just advocate boycotting the game industry in Canada. I, think I, I, I might have. I, yeah, I'd be very careful. <laughs> oh wait, Joe, Joe, uh, I just got yeah. a text message. Yeah. Canada does not want us up there anymore. Yeah, yeah, they've they've just rescinded our Nexus passes, and we are now on the no fly list for Canada's. Wow, well, that's great. Thanks, oh. Joe. Well, nice. That's okay. Hey, one last news story. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Scrolls, uh, which is a game from Mojang. Uh, it is now in beta. Now you probably remember Minecraft being in beta, and when you bought Minecraft in beta, you got all the updates forever. That's right. So don't forget that. In in perpetuity. That's right. So uh, it is now out. It is $12.95 in, what's that? Oh, pounds. Uh, that's pound sterling. Uh, yeah, uh, $14.95 So in, in the Euros. UK, it'd be $12.95. $20.95. Euros, 95. 14 dollars 95 and twenty ninety five here. Yep. And you'll uh, get it for free. And there's a lot of features there available. So there's some pictures, uh, custom decks, trading and trials, all that fun jazz uh, if you want to try that out. Uh, I guess my ultimate question to the community, Joe, is: Should we be doing a uh, a, a show called Scrolls Me? Well, maybe maybe what we should do is we should pick this game up, and the next time we have a game night on uh, Geek Gamer, Geek Gamer yeah. we'll we'll do this. Yeah, uh, I don't know if multiplayer works over the internet or not. It must. It has to. The internet. You would hope. You would. I hope mean. So. Anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe that's the best way to do an intro to it. Yeah. Because I'm not sure how this game is going to be. It's sort of a Magic the Gathering slash chess slash yeah, Stratego. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, I, it's going to be interesting to see how it falls and, and see how it goes and see how popular it ends up being. I don't think it's ever going to... I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as popular as Minecraft is. But then again, you know, for some inexplic- inexplicable region... Magic is still being played. I mean, it's so one. It, of, it it's might a, be. It's one of those things where, like, who would think that a game with building blocks and eight bit graphics would be popular at all? I mean, who would even yeah, but, do you know, a show about that? But the thing about so the thing about Minecraft, I think, is is it's not it's not the game or it's not the graphics, it's not the blocks, it's it's the the creativity and how well the mechanics works. You know that that you can do anything you want in it. And with scrolls, scrolls is limited in that. It's very much a, a card collecting game. Once you, you know, I, I but you know, I, it, I can't say that because like Pokemon is one of the most popular, uh, most popular series of all time. True. So who knows? It's really going to be hard to see. I, I'm going to have to pick up a copy because, you know, that's pretty much the way it goes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we'll I mean, and, 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 if, and, and if it's fun enough, try. I'll give it a fair shake. I'm, I'm reviewing it uh, having never played it before. So, you know, I'm talking about having never played it before. So we got to at least give it a fair shake. Right. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm just not sure. I think, it, I think it would work well on iPads, tablets. I just don't know how well it will work on desktops. So we'll see. Well, I mean, it'd 
it probably yeah. yeah it'll probably work just fine you would hope no i mean functioning yeah but a card game like this like the magic the gathering game for the ipad actually works really really well uh, um but that kind of a card game i don't think works generally work all that i don't think they work all that well on desktop pcs uh, they may they might be functioning well but but they're not as easy to use right well, there you go. There's our news of the week. If you guys uh, have uh, any thoughts on our news segments, feel free to send them in, minecraftme at geekgamer.tv. So, we have a, an awesome Play It segment to show you guys. It's packed full of advanced goodness, which I know you guys love. So now, let's play some Minecraft. Yay! It's time for Minecraft. Yay! Let's play. Hey Joe, how are you? Good. All right. So let's go outside. I think we'll do this outside. Yeah, and, and like that. And we're gonna do. Yeah, it's nice and sunny outside yeah. at least for now. Yeah, until it starts raining. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is something I ran across uh, on a YouTube video. It's kind of a cool idea on how to do a a tree harvest system. And I didn't really pre-build it. I pre-built it on the server. So I'm I'm gonna build just a small little example of. But the thing we're mostly gonna talk about is. Um, delivering materials using hoppers. Now, we talked about hoppers and moving materials around and even doing a little bit of sorting with them a while ago. But the big question a lot of people had is, well, great, you can move things side to side in a hopper. You can move them from top to bottom. How do you move things up? And you can't. Hoppers only go down or sideways. So that means you just need to start building high. That doesn't always work. I mean, it doesn't. And I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about a good example of this. I'll, I'll show a good example in the, in the, the main server after a while. All right. I'm not going to tell anybody where it is because okay. they'll be you know, surrounding us when we get there. But um, the solution to building up or to sending an object up is a dropper. What? Yeah. So that's a dropper. It has a smiley face on the front. That's as opposed to a dispenser, which has a, you know, O, o, o face. Um. So when you when you build a, a hopper facing up, see how that one's now this is or I'm sorry, not a hopper, this is a, a dropper again facing straight up. What it it'll shoots do, up, right? Right. So if I uh, if I put let's put a stack of uh, let's put a stack of stone in this thing. Okay. And if you open it, you'll see it's got a little inventory screen, just like a traditional hopper or dropper. All right. Um and then I'll uh, I'll put a block next to it. Um I'll put a block next to it, and I'll put a button on the block. And every time I push the button, it spits out an object and makes a little clicky noise. Neato. So what it's actually doing is every time it receives a redstone signal, it'll spit out an object. Okay. Every time it receives a pulse. Now, remember, with one of the really cool things is these new comparators that we've talked about a few times. With comparators... When you put it next to an object, when that object contains something, like I'm going to go ahead and put a stone and uh, stone block into it, it lights up the comparator. So if you have redstone coming off that and uh, drop a piece of redstone in front of that, you can see it'll light the redstone. Now, it doesn't light it very brightly. There's only one object in there. But if you take that signal and Amplify put it through a repeater, say, it, right. to make it full strength and then feed it back into itself, like what happens? It pops that block out. Now, if you uh, take and put a few of these... Uh, oh, that's going the wrong direction, but we'll fix that in a minute. Put a few hoppers in. And then put a chest out here. So let's. I'm just going to go ahead and throw a regular, a regular chest out here. Okay. If I can find one. Um, what this will do is this will take the object so i'm going to put once again i'm going to just put one stone and you'll see it light up and now it's moved through all the hoppers and if you check out the chest you'll see one stone in the chest one wow stone <laughs> now the cool thing about this is we can force objects into that dropper using a hopper so so basically so, you, you <laughs> so you're so you're basically using these hoppers here as, as a, a a pipe if you will. Well, I'm using the hoppers coming out of the dropper as a pipe. Right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a chest over here. I'm going to put a chest up there. Now, notice this chest, and, and I wouldn't necessarily have to put this this way. I could, I could 
stack these droppers and make this higher. Right. So right now, I'm still losing one block in height, but it's really not that big a deal because of how this works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in a whole bunch of stone blocks. Now, remember, our principles of, of hoppers, it's going to move sideways. You can see the 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 dropper is, and it, it's going to get confusing, dropper and hopper. The dropper is flashing furiously, or the redstone is. Because you put it's all these blocks in all here. all those blocks up into these hoppers, and if you go to this chest, open that up, you'll see blocks slowly getting deposited. Look, and it's, and it's counting the, up. It is. Because it's moving them from one block, from one end to the other. This is actually surprisingly simple. Um... Uh, that was not what I meant to do. Uh, so, so, uh, so, yeah. W- now what we're doing is we're moving this. Uh, we're moving this a distance. But more importantly, is is this use of this hop of the dropper? We're moving it up one block from where it started. Now, can you put a dropper on top of a dropper and yeah. and stack so if up we put droppers? A, if we put another dropper on top of this, so there's a, a du- two droppers, right? What will happen is, uh, um, let's see, put that up there, and we'll get rid of these. So I'll leave that one there. Uh, need a stone block. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm going to go ahead and build the the pipe of of hoppers. So now you can see it's going to go up two and across those three. Now it only works. Uh, at least so far in my experience, with two this height. Okay. And what often happens is because... Oh, no, I'm sorry. This isn't going to work at all. Um, <laughs> so Because you have to get the redstone. Happened, you have to have the redstone activate. The redstone has to activate both of them. But there's some funny properties with redstone, and we haven't really talked about this, but this will be a sort of a good starter point. We're just sending what's called a passive redstone signal into this bottom dropper right and that means it's only activating that block right so we need to now, run you, some redstone to this block right well if we change this now i'm running another repeater okay now we're running what's called an active signal into that and that actually powers not just that block but also the block above it oh okay or the block below it um so now if i if i take my blocks out again and i'm going to go ahead and move them over here so i moved them back into that chest and you'll see that firing Oh, I put this in the wrong place. Um, it fires the block that's above it and the block that's uh, below, or the block that is next to it and the block below it. Not um, so I'd have to do it like this. So now I'm powering the upper block, but I'm receiving signal from the lower block. So if I take all this stuff out, and I have a stacked stack of uh, stone in that, I'm going to put the stone back into this chest, and okay. you'll see it start firing, and if you open that, you'll see just one stack in the upper dropper, and you'll see the blocks starting to move through into the chest. But it's not filling up this chest. Oh, what is it doing now? It's just staying. It's getting stuck in one of these hoppers. Where the heck are they? It's only in the first They've all hopper. disappeared. Oh, they all got stuck on the bottom one. For some reason, the bottom one's not activating. I don't know why this isn't working. That's why I asked the questions. This is this works fine uh, in uh, in my where I use it. Um, so, but there's another way to do this. So we'll just do it this way. Um, now, a good question coming in from the chat room yeah. from Trey Bullock is obviously a redstone circuit that's repeating like this. Will this cause server load? No, because it's only going to run when the blocks are in that dropper. Ah, so this is a, another way to do basically the same thing. You can see we have a dropper on the bottom that I'm going to rig up to fire into that hopper. Oh, I see. This is so kind of like a fires into the step. hopper, and then we'll what we'll do is up here we'll put in another um, set of blocks with a repeater here, and we'll fire off this second. Um, I got to put a put a so this signal is this will connect here. Which we don't really want, so we'll do that. Uh, which also won't work. Uh, I got to get that signal over there. We'll do this. Um, 
This looks so complicated. So it's really not that complicated. You can see the sim it's a simple loop here coming across. And the only reason this is a repeater here, and you could do this with a half slab or you could do it, you could isolate the circuit a few other ways, but it's just to isolate it so the signal doesn't travel up here. If we leave redstone down here, you can see how that connects with a repeater. Um, or a, in this case, acting as a diode, it won't, it won't uh, connect that signal. I see. So then we bring this redstone back over here. And oh, I don't have enough space because these this chest is in the way. But what I would actually do is this. So now we have two stages. See how it, it'll go into uh, the first stage and it'll yeah. go into the second stage? Yeah. So I'll put the chest a little further away. Put another hopper coming out of it. Another hopper coming out of that. And connect those. Change that one. Okay. So now we should have a continuous signal. If I move this, you'll see the move through the lower set, now the upper set, and now it's going to come out into this chest at the very end. And it's actually working this time. Look at that. Hey, there you go. So this is, you know, one of the reasons why you don't do redstone on the fly. Now, something I discovered while I was playing with this, and we'll, we'll show this on the other server, the, the reason why I built this was I created a uh, semi-automatic tree farm. What? Now, the idea is that, uh, and we'll, I'll show, I'll, we'll, we'll go hop over to the main server and I'll show you what that is. Um, well, let me set the time back today. Uh, is basically, I had a, a field of hoppers, a giant field of hoppers with half slabs above it okay. and dirt uh, in different places. And then it moved. Uh, whenever you dig up using an axe, dig up a, a tree, the block of wood would fall off. It would go through the half slab because what's really interesting about these uh, these these hoppers is if you put a half slab on top of them. Uh, so I'll put a I'll throw a half slab on some of these. Uh, the blocks will actually travel right through those. Really? Yeah. So if I uh, let's grab a, I'll grab another stack of stones since it's convenient and throw these down here. You see they disappear. Whoa! And look, they're traveling. And then the circuit starts running. See, so they'll go right blocks, they'll go right through half slabs into hoppers. Now, I have no idea if this is a bug and this is going to get fixed in the next update. But at least for right now, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, so basically, you have a big field of these covered with half slabs. You have blocks of dirt in different places. You plant your trees on top of that. You get your trees to grow to a certain height. And you use that with you just using glowstone blocks to both light the area and to limit the height of the trees. Go around, dig all your trees up. You don't worry about collecting the wood. Because it falls onto these half slabs, goes through the hoppers, and inside your house you have a chest <laughs> sitting there that says wood. And you just go in there, grab the wood out of it, grab the saplings so out of it. So this is really a, field. a lazy man's farming. This is a lazy man's, the, the end of a lazy man's collection system, and we'll show the actual lazy man part of it in a minute. Oh, but I want to show one more really cool thing okay. that I, I managed to do with, with this system or, or a system very similar to this on the server, and that is... Uh, indicator lights. So I was kind of curious to know if it was working or not. And I really wanted to find out if if this whole philosophy, this whole idea functioned. And, uh, and what I came up with was indicator lights. And it, it's, it's like one of those, well, this is simple. <laughs> so I have, I have a, a bunch of, just like that, just a bunch of, uh, and you, keep trying to get good shots and you end up in my way uh just just a bunch of these uh comparators coming off right and then i throw redstone lamps next to them and the cool thing is when you put something in this chest that you're standing on and it starts going through these hoppers it lights up the lights to <laughs> tell you which which hoppers are occupied and then when it finishes and you'll see in a second here when it finishes transferring all the blocks over they'll all turn off in sequence as well. That is so and, cool. Uh, and it, it's just a really cool method of, of getting an idea of if your system is active or not. Now, I'll show you uh, a little bit more. Like, like I said, we'll, we'll do a real quick show on the, on the main server of the tree farm. But what I love about this is if you, if you end up with... Uh, so the, the droppers don't move blocks as quickly as the hoppers do. So they will the lights will actually start flashing. You can see the, the comparators flashing. That's showing you how fast the blocks are moving. The redstone lamps just aren't... Oh, there they go. 
So it's finished moving all the blocks now. That is so neat. Um, but uh, so the the comparators or the uh, the droppers will will not move blocks up as quickly as the hoppers can move them sideways or down. But they will move them at a reasonable rate, and obviously you can you can empty empty a good amount. And if you're doing a tree farm or if you're doing an iron fa- iron farm or something like that this is a you know this collection method and then you bring it all to one area if you don't want to use water for whatever reason um this is a, a good viable method to do it and uh well let's let's hop over to the main server and we'll actually okay. see the example of this in action um all right i need to re uh go back into 151 here yeah so let me do that now All right, and I uh, I know where you live, so I'll just fly over. I'll just TP you here. Oh, All right, fine. So, uh, so what we've got here, this is the tree farm. Okay. You can see I have a little sign out front that says Payback's Experimental Area now. Uh, so the idea is you go through here with, with an axe, and uh, you just top, chop down the trees. And as you chop them down, you get these uh, wonderful blocks out of them, and they you just, you know, they fall into the onto the grid. And it looks like they're disappearing, but when well, I go they're ba- they're going into hoppers. And if you follow me over here, see the see the redstone lamps over here. You can see them all flashing. Those are the blocks actually traveling through this path. Those the ones that I just threw over there. So there's a whole series of hoppers under there. And if you if you head inside the house, oops, I missed the door. I'm terrible at going through doors. I don't know why. All right, you'll see this chest over here in the corner. And if you right click on that, you'll see. Uh, well, there's a bunch of junk in it because some people were playing with it. Um, but, uh, you'll <laughs> see the, uh, the spruce wood in the corner is what I just threw in there. And, uh, and we'll go down and I actually have an access way to, to get in to take a look at this and how, see a little bit of how it works in behind the scenes. And, uh, so down here, right here, we're directly under the floor and you can see the droppers behind you. See the dropper facing up. So that's that's what actually shoots it into the chest. There's actually two droppers stacked on top of each other there okay. using the system that that I said worked but didn't work when we tried tried it in the uh, show server. Okay. And you can see all these hoppers and over here the comparators, these are these are lighting up those blocks. And you just follow these hoppers all the way down and see another stack of uh, droppers. So this is what what I tried to do in the server that should work but didn't work, stupid Minecraft. Um, and then you can see uh, all these stages going down and up and down and up are, are to get around. You can see the dripping lava. I have these lava paths that light up some of my area, and that's what this is getting around, is getting actually underneath the lava. So if I open this up, you'll see lava. So, see, lava up there. See, lava. All right. uh, so <laughs> so this goes around the lava but what's really cool is if you come on out here and I know you're in, in creative now so fly on over here and you'll see the underside of all of the hoppers that channel all the, all the material from that, that experimental wood farm into that one stack that goes into that chain hey look some mobs are showing up over here um so definitely cool. Uh, I mean, this is this is just an idea, and this is one application for this. Like I said, if you if you have the resources to make hoppers like this, use them for all different kinds of stuff. Um, they are really really cool. Uh, am I really wearing gold? Di- I am wearing. Why am I wearing diamond armor? That is really dumb. <laughs> Here, let me start. Here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anyway, so this is this is the idea, and and the big thing is is that technique of moving blocks up using this this actually really simple circuit here, a comparator coming out of a dropper, feeding back into the dropper to fire that block out as quickly as one comes into it, and uh, pushing it up into another hopper so it goes further down the chain. A lot of materials though, if you want to make a grid this big though. It, it is kind of a lot of materials. Hoppers are not that material expensive. I mean, they are a little bit, but they're not as bad as some things. And uh, and you don't have to use that. If you'd rather use... Um, so the reason we're using this is they'll pull an object through the half slab so you can walk around on it freely. 
If you'd rather use a water system to drain it all into one spot and then use hoppers to move it from there, oh, that's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. The nice thing about this is you can walk around on it. You know, you don't have to you don't have to worry about swinging against the current or having something you can walk on or that sort of thing. Right. So yeah. it's pretty convenient in that sense. That looks very cool. So, very impressive. But yeah, so this is uh, uh this this little circuit right here. This if you ever want to move blocks up in a in a hopper chain, that little circuit right there, a repeater, a comparator, and some redstone. That's that's all you need. Neat. That'll do it. Sweet. So and then combine it with all the other cool stuff. Like the sorter that we talked about a few weeks ago, and and you know all the other cool things you can do. Please don't take out any of my roof. Uh, no, there, no, you never know where there's lava. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I, I use a. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um. So, so yeah, you never know where the the cool the the comparators and and or the, uh, uh, you know, you can use this. This is just a piece of your overall hopper block movement architecture. Very cool. Yeah, I love it. Why is this tree not grown? I don't know. Nobody's been around it enough, I think. Oh, we love you, tree. Love yeah. You. You need to talk to it. Sing, All right. Sing at it. So there's our play it segment. <laughs> Some advanced sorting techniques uh, that deal with hoppers. And uh, now uh, it's time for our new segment, which we like to call the texture pack pick. I think that's what we'll just call well, it, the texture pack well, pick. Well, I, I think... I think... So... Wait, you have something? Just to swap it up. Uh-huh. Let's do the showcase. Oh, I'm sorry. I got confused. And then do texture packs. No, that's okay. All right, fine, fair enough. Because the showcase is going to help us with the texture packs. Oh, I follow you. Okay. Yeah. Well, since it's time for the showcase, I'm going to I'm gonna push this button and, and, and play some music. Time for the server showcase. Button. Have of, you pushed it yet? No, not yet. I'm going to do it now. Server Showcase of the Week. All right. So it's time for the Server Showcase of the Pick of the Week. And Joe, where are we? Who's? What is this? So uh, this is something that when we first started, when we did these texture pack stuff, I'm, I think I kind of casually mentioned offhand, it'd be kind of cool to have a spot where all the blocks are so we could really see what the different texture packs are. And, of course, our community, <laughs> being what they are, Made took an entire week to do it. Oh my Actually, god! Actually, they took like three days. I think somebody messaged me on Saturday saying, "Hey, check this out!" Wow, you guys are amazing. Um, so this was made by Sea Wake, and I think Maldek had a hand in it as well for some of the really rare blocks. Nice, but uh, it's a it's a texture or it's a block museum or a use it for demoing texture packs and actually seeing what all different blocks look like. That's why I kind of wow. wanted to do this first. And so you can see, it goes off two directions from here. We're in a corner. And uh, the ores and their metals and uses gallery. So you walk through here, you can see gold and diamond blocks, both the, the blocks and the ores below it. Signs describing what wow. everything is, the different kinds of blocks in in the frames. Uh, just a really cool collection of all the different items, the different tools you can use, different things you can make from the blocks. Here's a like here's a, an enchanted diamond pickaxe on the wall. This is great. Um, uh, you keep going. You get redstone all the way down here. Here's what a redstone switch would look like. A comparator's on the wall. Uh, then you get into the next section. This is the nether section. So you can actually see the sign. It says, the nether experience. Mind the fire. And uh, so you get in here. You get lava. I love the signs. Caution. Real lava. No compensation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've got nether war. We've got nether rack. Here's some quartz blocks over here in the corner. Both the uh, chiseled and the regular quartz blocks. And and just unbelievable the amount of detail that went into this, and and almost I have the only block I haven't found yet is uh, is um, uh, bedrock, but you know what I'm sure I just haven't spotted it yet. Very nice. <laughs> so different drops that are from the Nether, everything in in really well organized collections. Uh, you keep going a little further here, and this is wool. So here we got all different the different colors of wool that are all the different colors that are available. Um, sponge back here. I love this. Is really in the rare. early days, folks scavenging for beds recklessly slaughtered the sheep <laughs> and only got one block of wool. Yeah, there's even history on some of the signs and <laughs> talks about different. It's just really cool. This is really, great. really creative. Yeah. Um, out here. Oh, here we got farming related stuff. So you can see the coca beans on the wall. We got full grown wheat, plants of the world exposition. Yeah, this just is fantastic. Great. This is incredible. Um. 
different plants and flower plot and flower pots. We got some watermelon and, and glist, glistening melon, glistering melon on the wall. I keep I always say that wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, over here we got some. Oh, here's some some potion making stuff. <laughs> Kindly unloan um, from the Kaloa Museum. <laughs> 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 uh snowballs over here. Sorry it melted despite our special uh, special lights. <laughs> um bricks and uh you know different just tons of different stuff and then wow. over all the way out here is is different woods. woods and what the, the little world. saplings look like in the planters for the different kinds of wood. And uh all different kinds of cool stuff, random stuff in the picture frames behind it too which I really love. And here's the here's the minerals. Remember, this was if we'd started and we went right. If we'd gone left, we would have gone in here. So you can see grass and uh, mycelium on the on the side behind you, um, which is really rare in the server because we don't have any natural mushroom islands. We have a few that have been created, but no natural ones. Um, behind you, sandstone and glass, cactus, obsidian. Like I see, like I said, no bedrock. I haven't seen any bedrock yet, but I'm sure they have a spot specially picked out for it. They just need someone to come along and place it in there. And we missed a big part of it. We didn't get any of the user-created stuff. So if you head inside here, in here we got enchanting tables, wow. cauldrons, TNT block, redstone lamps, chest, ender chest, jukebox, a bed. I mean, all this stuff. He's got very nearly every block in Minecraft. Here, this here, is droppers great. and dispensers. We just talked about droppers uh, in here. And pistons, not just pistons. If you want to see what they look like retracted, there's a switch right there on the wall to, re to uh, show them off retracted. It's an or, interactive uh, exhibit. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, just just really amazing. And there's a dog. I didn't know there was a dog in here. Um, actually, that's a wolf, I think. It doesn't have a collar. This must be for uh, <laughs> a f uh, future exhibits over here, I would assume. But, but, yeah, I just thought this was really cool and exactly the sort of thing that we really need to show off texture packs. And Oh, and up here, minecart. <laughs> So if you if you hit the button, it even plays a note block over there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you gotta you have your you have your claims turned on. You gotta do I see yeah. slash I see. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so but really cool. Uh, I just thought this was great. I had another one all picked out, and then somebody sent me this, and I was like, this would be better. So who made this? Uh, Seawake and Maldek, I know, uh, were the two, where I believe the two who worked on it, primarily Seawake, um, although I'm sure there were a few other people who had their hand in it, and I, if they are in the chat room and talking, or in the server, it'd be great if so you how do told we us who you we're, are. How do you get uh, out? I don't know that there is an exit. What? But we don't really want to exit. Yeah, I know, but, I mean, what if someone wants to come and check it out? Oh, well, there is a stairway down over here. Oh, I found it. Yeah. And it's... There's like, <laughs> there's nothing here. It's so weird. Well, this is this is, you know, he had to add an extra story onto his castle or something. So I'm pretty sure it's mostly Sea Wake. Um, we haven't really checked out his place, but uh, oh, he's over by the pyramid. <laughs> We're out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, let's go back in. Yeah, cause... we are. We are. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's an awesome um, showcase. It is really cool, and uh, and I, I I figured this would be perfect for us to uh, for talking about texture packs. Yeah, absolutely. Since it it pretty much examples every block for texture packs. All right, yeah. so there you go. There's our server showcase of the week. Now remember, you guys, if you want to uh, send us your creation and you want to show off, now it's prerequisite. It's got to be in our server. Okay. It's not going to be in yeah. someone else's server. That's not what the showcase is about. So if you want to know more, head over to our website at uh, geekgamer.tv slash minecraftme. On the right-hand side is a server showcase nomination form button. Click that button, fill out the form, and watch. Because yours might be selected for a future server showcase. So very cool. All right. Well, Joe, I think it's time now for our newest segment, Pack Picks. <laughs> Texture Pack Picks. So uh, here's our theme song for Texture Pack Picks time. All right, cut it. All right, here we go. It's time. Ba -da -da -da. It's, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel safe playing even that much. It's seriously, oh, it's that's fine. Like dangerous. It's fine. So it's now time for the Texture Packs pick <laughs> of the week, and no special graphics for that at all. However, uh, we're going to start with uh, with uh, with. Actually, I'm going to disconnect because. 
you know, you actually, everything's all inclusive. So even the, the, the title screens change. So we're going to go uh, with Joe's pick first, which is something called Mine Wars. So as you can see uh, on the on the screen there, you got a you got a planet there. Is that Tatooine? Do we do we know? Uh, I have I I, uh, I don't think so. All right, seems unlikely. All right. Anyway, so we got Mine Wars. It says up here uh, the buttons that look kind of futuristic in nature. We'll click on those. So the full name of the texture is Mine Wars, a Star Wars texture pack. That's nice. The full name. So here we are in the uh, of the world, and we'll do just do a, a once over here, and you could see. And actually, I'll bring up my inventory because I know you guys want to see that too. Uh, so, so the frames look different. Oh, everything! Everything. Looks, I think everything looks really different. The big changes I noticed uh, were actually in the the crafting blocks. So if you come inside here, you can see that these are pistons. They kind of look a little imperial to me and when they extend you can see the the markings go all the way with them and then uh over here is a enchanting table looks a little bit like a just like a you know mystical not a mystical bench but technology or something and right you can see tnt looks very different i think that that's sort of inspired by the um uh i can't remember I can't remember the name of that. Um, and and uh, redstone lamp, I think, looks really cool. Look, off is red, on is white. Ooh. Um, the chests, I love how the chests look. Uh, Ender chest looks the same, but the regular chests, I think they look really cool. Uh, these are the jukebox and a note block look almost the same. Uh, my favorites, though, are over here. Crafting table, furnace, and the dropper and dispenser, you can see it looks like I have a little control panel on top of them. I just think that's cool. That is pretty. Uh, I like that. <laughs> so so this was uh, obviously inspired by Star Trek. Uh, Star Wars. I, I just start. Sorry. Yep. Star Wars. Uh, I just think it looks really cool. I love the 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 design and, and overall. I don't I, I tried using it a little bit ago. Oh, look at the, the, the wolf is all funny colors, too. Um, I tried using it a little bit and it uh, honestly got a little distracting. So um. I'm going to give this... Now, this is at, at a five, of five blocks, blocks, right? Five blocks, yeah. yeah. A five-block scale. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to... Half blocks are okay. Half <sighs> slabs are okay, so... I'm going to give it... Uh, uh, I'm going to give it a three. No, no, two and a half. Two and a half. Two I, blocks I would give it, and a half I, I would give it. I would give it more. Uh, I would If it was, you know, for Star Wars, I love, I love Star Wars just for that. It's getting a free block, so let's call it three and a half. Three and a half. Uh, but in terms of practical use, everyday use as a texture pack, it just doesn't there because it's it's kind of hard to see. the The one of the cool things though is the um, the torches actually look really cool. Uh, so this is what this is a torch. If you come over to where I am, just a, a dot. That's a torch. The little white dot. That's a torch. Anyway, um, so I don't think it's really effective for everyday use, but it is a cool looking texture pack, and I like the style that went into it. And I'm hearing from um, uh, somebody in the chat room said that it this texture pack may be part of a new map from Hypixel. Okay. So we might see this in an adventure map. We'll be we'll be doing at some point in the future. I'm not sure. Cool. But uh, definitely a cool looking map, um, or a, a cool texture pack. But again, I'm I'm gonna give it. God, I keep changing. I'm going to give it three. Stick to that's it. Not three. Two and a half. Straight, <laughs> flat, straight down the middle. Two and a half. Two and a half. Indecisive me, two and a half. Right down the middle. All right. It is not good enough for everyday use, but it is It is still cool looking. All right. My so uh, my pick this week yeah, came from the chat room. This is completely random. I've not seen it before t until today. It's called John Smith Legacy, and we'll have a link in the show notes. And as you could see... Uh, the font is a little hard to read, uh, which is, is really hard to read. It's really hard to read for me. Uh, but it, as the you second can button is multiplayer. Yeah, I know that. Uh, so <laughs> let me let me jump into our server, and oh my goodness, it's definitely got a uh, old English Ooh. feel to it. Uh, wow, lots of wood wood textures, um, and so the beacons look really cool. Uh, it's kind of got glass around yeah. a, an old lamp. Uh, the bookcase looks like a bookcase. Uh, the furnaces, even the the droppers look pretty cool. They actually look like more traditional faces. Oh, they do. And um, the, but the the only thing with those is it's hard to tell the difference between the 
the two different mouths. I mean, that's the only difference, right? Yeah, the, the dropper's a little bit more open. Dispenser's a little bit more close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we got uh, pistons here. Look very traditional. I like the anvils. They look great. There's a little bit more detail. Uh, the enchanting tables, culture. I mean, this stuff looks really nice. TNT. It's got a creeper on it, which is really nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... I gotta say this; th these look very, very cool. Let me uh, take a look at some of the other blocks here. The item frames, a um, little bit. Actually, it looks like they look a little bit more bigger. Uh, oh, the the lapis lazuli looks really nice. That's really cool looking. Mm -hmm. um, definitely very old Englishy, if, if, if that's such a word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely got some uh, some detail to it. Um, this is my first time ever seeing this, so I, I like it. Now, the Woods of the World. This is, I think, an appropriate exhibit for this texture pack. And this makes the wood look really good. Hmm. So if you're doing something, I guess, with a lot of wood, this is the texture pack for you, I think, because it looks yeah. great. Now, is this a, is this a standard res texture pack or now a high-res texture this, pack? Well, I, I guess you would call it med, medium res. It's 32 by 32. Okay. Uh, so it's not like super high res like we've seen with like some other texture packs, but yeah. Um, well, it, 32 is high enough. It's outside of the classic. Yeah. So Minecraft's classic resolution is 16 by 16. So it's it's about double that. So this one was sent in uh, uh, via the chat room by Steve McMinecraft. So thank you for the suggestion. Now, it's going to take a big standard for me to make it a five. Uh, five block rating. I, I'm not going to give this a five block, but I think uh, it's definitely very, very good. Uh, I'm wondering, um, I didn't see when I downloaded this a higher resolution. I think it'll look even better if it was higher resolution. I love the vines. I think it looks great. So I'm going to, and you know, it's, it's going to take a lot to impress me, but I'm going to give this a three and a half. Ooh. So this is, so this is a three and a half slabs, or three blocks and a half slab. Uh, I I I, I, I think it's very very usable. I just, to me, a lot of the, uh, it's a little distracting for me. I think there's a little too much going on. I'm a, I'm more of a cleaner texture pack person. Uh, yeah, it does seem awfully busy, and for me, it looks like it's actually kind of dark. You know, I don't I I I tend to like um, slightly brighter. You know, it seems like there's a lot more dark colors, dark browns and I mean, grays and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and I'm looking, you know, looking at some of these buildings from from afar. You know, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it just seems every block I don't think needs to be heavily detailed. I think, and that's mm -hmm. where I'm kind of gets a little busy when you have a lot of blocks yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. other than that, I like like some of these like stone blocks. I think look great. Um, mm -hmm. like these these stone blocks. So there you go. Uh, there's uh the pick. Now remember. Uh, we want your uh, your favorite texture pack picks. We want to know what you're using. Uh, so send them into our email, minecraftme at geekgamer.tv. Put texture packs or texture pack pick in the subject line so we can filter those out. And make sure you put a link in there. Uh, that will help us out tremendously. But yeah, very, very cool pick. Three and a half uh, slabs and two and a half for Joe's Star Wars. Yeah. I wish right. Star Wars, I wish I could rate it higher. I know, but me, you know it's it's improving. So I'm going to go back well. to Faithful 32 real quick here, and I'm going to um, just uh, show here on the screen uh, all the lovely, lovely people that are joining us live right now. Um, just as a reminder, you too can join us during a live show, and if you pay attention to our calendar, uh, we will reward you uh, with. Uh, you know, just awesome wealth by the form of experience. That's right. We bribe you. We don't care. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for for hanging out with us. And when you do that, you get a mention on the show, and we give you some EXP as I do a, a nice floating flyover our beautiful world. Which, as you can see right now, I am like a jet plane. <laughs> uh, I'm like a jet plane flying over the planet. Through a thunderstorm. Yes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So there you go. But very nice. Thanks so much for the suggestions. It's always... <laughs> that, that one wasn't me. I know that, that wasn't was you. And, and, yeah, I'm going to walk away from that. The first one was me. Yeah. 
So there you go. <laughs> awesome stuff. So now it's time for one of our big segments. I know you guys love to send in your comments and questions. It's now time for the Minecraft Me messages. Here we go. It's time to dip in the old mailbag. It's time for Minecraft Me messages. Remember, as a reminder, you can email us, minecraftme at geekgamer.tv. We also have a contact form. We take your voicemails, and we love video questions. And if you send a video question in, you get right to the head of the line. And we do have a video question here. Can you believe that, Joe? Uh, so let me go ahead and jump to that, and here is that question. Hi, Joe and Chase. I want to make a plea to please, please fix the spawn rate of hostile mobs on the public server. When you recently switched from Bucket to Spigot for the server, our spawn rate for hostile mobs dropped dramatically, almost the, to the point of being useless. Well, this is really helpful when building most creations, it makes it virtually impossible to get wither skeleton heads, villager zombies, etc. As always, love the show and the server. I hope this message wasn't too sh- <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional <laughs> or not, but very cool. Um, all right, Joe, since uh, you're the Mr. Server Administrator man, we got an answer for him? Uh, yeah, I, I, so I, I've been fighting this issue for a little while. I just made some changes before the show that increased the spawn rate both of hostile and friendly mobs. So you should see more creatures and more uh, monsters. And flying around uh, the area directly around spawn at least, I do see more creatures showing up. The big thing is spawning is based on your, it's rel- uh, relative to your location. So it's only going to spawn within about three blocks or three chunks of where someone is actually in the server standing. So if you stay in an area, you should get more mobs showing up around you. Or if you go to an area where a lot of people are, they should get more mobs. But it is limited on how many there are. So if you're flying through an area, if you're running through an area really quick, you're not probably going to see very much. But if you stop and wait, they will spawn around you given enough time. Right. So, uh, and of course, it goes without saying that monster, uh, monster mobs only, you know, evil mobs only spawn at night. So if, you, if you're, you know, flying around during the day or hanging around during the day, you're wondering where all the bad things are. It's because they only come out at night. There you go. I mean, that's sort of, you know, basics. Yeah. Got some. Yeah, qu- they should be better now. So give it a try. L- please send us another email or a voicemail uh, and let us know if it doesn't work. Or another video. Or another video. Or, or snail mail. Norm's Girl wrote in in episode 77, Michael, add numbers here, sent in a video asking what the question was that you had to discuss off air before answering. I believe it might have been the email that Norm5192 sent in about asking if the DIN maps for the resource maps could be released to the public or something along those lines. Hope that jogs your memory. Oh. Is there uh, DIN maps for the resource maps? I didn't know there well, were. Well, they're... they're- they're, oh, they're DIN maps for all of the maps. Oh, okay. All right, all right. But they're behind a an, an account wall where you have to know the URL, which isn't really that hard to figure out. <laughs> but you have to have permission to set up an account or set up a DIN map account on the server. Which and you only may not. mods and admins have that permission. Yeah. We do that for, so, for security reasons. Uh, we do that, uh, you know, for privacy because some people like to be out in the middle of nowhere and they don't want to be bothered. Yeah. Yeah, there's some build stuff that's that looks really cool in in Dinmap, and everyone's well, we'll show some of that stuff off. But there are there's a lot of stuff people build that they just want to be building. They want to be left alone. They don't want to deal yeah. with anybody coming there, even if they've claimed it. They still don't want to have to deal with people hanging around and asking them what's up. Uh, so that's sort of the reasoning behind it. We've talked in the past about possibly relaxing some of the restrictions on that, making it more accessible. But I still don't know. Uh, we definitely haven't come to a decision on that. Right. And that's something that I think we really need to talk to the the community on a whole uh, about that and, and the players on the server. Those are the ones whose voice really matters in a decision like that because they're the ones who are building the stuff. That's true. That's true. So, A uh, question here from Bodog11 writes in and says, Hey, Joe and Chase. Bodog11, Boo Scary Dog 11 here, and I have an idea question based on one of the questions of episode 77. The question was basically, could we spend real money for in-game features on the server? I thought this was a bad idea until I thought about it. Heads, not wither heads, sponges, and more, only available in creative mode. How might we get these? 
Well, I still thought about real life money was a bad idea, but I thought, how about in-game items like five diamonds equals one head? I thought this might be a great way to get those decoration blocks that we or I need, and possibly no one complain. Thanks for reading, and I hope for a response. Thanks. Well, um, you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to give players an unfair advantage or give uh, players certain things. However, uh, it's one of those situations where we want to, um, you know, keep it balanced, but reward those who decide to donate uh, to Geek Gamer TV, and you know, give them different color text as appreciatory, and maybe a cape, and you know, things like that, where it wouldn't give them an unfair advantage, uh, sort of thing. I don't want to do a pay for play thing. Uh, that's just not my style, and it doesn't pay really, to win. Pay to win, yeah. Uh, I don't want it to be like um, free to play. And oh yeah, if you pay. <laughs> yep. So, uh, so anyway, so yes, um, I don't know if you have anything to add on that, Joe. Uh, but yes, that's no, I I don't like the idea of of giving somebody a heads up, uh, you know, an advantage over another player. You know, people have th- have thrown around the idea of being able to buy uh, sets of claims blocks, that sort of thing, and um, and and we've given them out as prizes. Uh, you know, we gave out um, what five thousand blocks for the to the winner of the Hunger Games right, a few yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, and so we've given them out as prizes, but but being able to buy that that's not something that we really want. You know, it's supposed to be something that everybody. You, you, it's based on how long you're in the server, how much time you spend on it, and the more time you spend, the more you're going to get out of it. Rather than the more money you spend, the more you get out of it. So Very cool, because we have a lot of people who who you know don't even. You know, keep messaging us and saying, you know, I can't even afford the game. So right, yeah. So I mean, sure don't want to alienate them. Yeah, we don't want to alienate anybody, and that's why we we cover other platforms. Obviously, we do stuff on PC only because that's the majority of you that are playing. But as soon as they launch a public server or a server that we can install for Pocket Edition, we're going to do an episode on Pocket Edition. It's going to happen. Uh, so yeah. so stand by for that. Um, and as soon as maybe they let servers happen for Xbox 360. Maybe that'll happen too down the road. I don't know. We have the ability technically to do it. It's not hard. So uh, We got a question here. I'm not sure who from. Um, Rockdog15 wrote in and said, Hey, can you guys put up a new Tekkit server for us to play on? I remember you guys saying that you were going to do it after that Minecraft Me server was up and running with the other people. Joe? I, it, well... <laughs> Tech it or feed the beast was the discussion, and there has been some progress in that direction. Okay, but not really a whole lot. Oh, all right. I, other people have done a lot. I haven't really done a whole lot for it. It's just been busy. Well, why don't we? But, um, what what if we had another head server admin that takes care of that? Well, yeah, I've been I've been talking to a couple guys who've okay. been working on on a couple of our mods. Who've been they they actually have set up a uh, server on one of their own boxes, and um, I got to get in there. and And they they say they've worked out everything. They've got got all the mechanics good, and everything's great. We just got to got in get in there and give it a try, and uh, then we can get it set up on the on the main server and and have another uh, have a feed the beast or a tech server up. Have another feed segment the is what we're doing, which so, which yeah. I think we're we're getting ready to do. So. We're, well, we'll say this. It's in the planning stages. We'll put it yes. there. Just put it there. Yes. It's in the planning stages. Yes. Uh, Patrick wrote in and said, My son and I are big fans of your show, and since I do not play the game, it has been a ton of help. This past Memorial Day weekend, he turned seven, and with Minecraft Me's help the, of the past episodes, also defeated the Ender Dragon. Yes! That's so cool to hear. I was mm-hmm. wondering if he could get a shout out and congratulations from you two on an upcoming show. His name is Landon. Thank you and keep up the great work, Patrick. Well, Landon, congratulations on defeating the Ender Dragon. Enjoy Big the time and and happy birthday too. Yeah, and enjoy the Ender Pearl. Hopefully, you haven't yeah. burned it yet or used it. Yeah, hopefully not. Yeah, or, that's us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're gonna want to yeah. cherish that. For remember, a while. remember, Chase hasn't killed the Ender Dragon yet. Oh, hush. He has hush. Has hey, it's overgrowth. Wrote in. <laughs> he was wondering if we could consider doing picks of the week for Minecraft because it could give someone 
some help or something along the lines of that. For example, mods, texture packs, tips and tricks. I think it'd be a cool way to end the show. And also Chase's next name for level eight should be level eight Joe Wannabe. That's feels weird. Uh, by the way, I f- love the show, and I hope you guys are going to be doing Minecraft Me for a long time to come. There you go. Overgrowth. Yes. Uh, let's see here. We got time for two more messages here. Uh, I'm just jumping here. Um, hey, uh, I've got a question here from Rec 99 I just got into Minecraft, back into Minecraft on the PC. Being ready to get back into it, I updated to 1.5. Do you have a reliable website to degrade my game? He means downgrade his game, probably. Uh, if you want to jump back a version, we've been suggesting to people to use the dev launcher. It's really easy to go back, mm-hmm. but you can't go too far back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you'll be able to play the snapshots. You just basically select in the top right corner what version you want to run. 1.5.1 yeah. or 152. Uh, our server is running 151 right now. Uh, but yeah, or you can use the Digex launcher is a good one. Uh, if you're yep. advanced, the Magic launcher, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, ma- uh, Magic launcher is what I use a lot. But the new Dev launcher works really well. It's actually a pretty good tool. Yeah. Uh, so I would I would recommend that one. Um, that said, hopefully the server is going to move to f- uh, one five two fairly soon. I just need to come up with a fair a free weekend. Oh, okay. Not this weekend. No, this weekend won't be free. Maybe on your on-call weekend, since you'll just be around the house. That's, since I'll just be hanging around at home, yeah. 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 <laughs> Our last email comes in from McCraft2000, wondering if we could do a video about the mods that we use on our server and how you prevent griefers. Also, could you do a video on how to install texture packs and mods? Well, guess what? We did one on texture packs. Uh, we might want to... And, and we did one on mods. Yeah. Now, they're a little bit older. They're with previous versions. They are. Uh, but uh, what I was thinking about doing, and I'm glad you brought this up, Matcraft 2000 is uh, creating uh, a couple of just short videos, five, ten minutes long, where we show you how to run different versions of Minecraft or how to install a texture pack. You know, just real quick, mm-hmm. witted things that you can always go back to and watch later on uh, that are, uh, and we'll update them if the game ever changes the way you do it. Like, for example, texture packs used to be a button on the main menu, and you had to, ch- you could only change them, you couldn't change them midstream. You couldn't change them while you're in the game. Now you can. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, as long as things don't change, we won't update, but if we have to update, we'll update. No big deal. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, I also want to do a couple of videos about our server. Uh, you know, some uh, server etiquette that really don't feel, fit in the preview uh, purview of the show, but I think it'd be good for informational purposes, if that makes any sense. Like, hi, you want to join the Minecraft Me server? Well, here are some rules you need to follow. And then we'll have, like, step one, and we'll show, like, a video clip of what not to do. <laughs> and I think... I, I, I thoroughly expected you to say, you may have heard of me from such... <laughs> Hi, I'm Troy <laughs> McClure. You yeah. may have heard me on some me podcasts from, uh... as My- <laughs> Minecraft Me and Geek yeah. Gamer Weekly and Hoser Chat. Right. Anyway, so yes, there you go, Minecraft. <laughs> Yes, uh, that's the answer to your question. Uh, by the way, you guys, you can always uh, send in your, your comments, your questions, anything you like to MinecraftMe at GeekGamer.tv, or uh, you can head to our website. At the top edge of the page, there's a button that says Contact Geek Gamer TV. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail or fill out the form. Uh, we also received a question about, hey, how can I send in videos? Well, you can send them in as a video attachment, if you wish, or you could post it to YouTube and give us the link. Uh, So there's many different ways you could do it. Uh, But yes, um, and I want to remind everybody, if you want to support an independent internet content, we don't make anything on this show. Honestly, cross my heart. If you like independent internet media and you love Minecraft me and you're over 18 and you're legally allowed to donate money, that is yours. (laughs) You can do this so on our website, geekgamer.tv slash donate or slash support. Uh, you can uh, just type in a donation amount and click donate, or you can uh, hook yourself up with an automatic monthly subscription. We have different levels you can do that. I'm going to be redoing this page here pretty soon. But, but yes, it's just a small way as a thank you, um, not to put any pressure on anybody. But, you know, right now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm unemployed. I'm actually out there looking for a new career and a new job. 
And before you say Chase, you should be doing Minecraft me every single day. I would do that if we got paid for it. I just can't afford to work for free. Well, can't aff- yeah, because I have to pay bills. It's a long story. You know, kids, you know, bills, mortgage, car payments. Wait, I don't have a car payment. Car insurance payments. Stuff like that. <sighs> Mr. Joseph Falby. I'm going to end on a downer. Mr. Joseph Falby. You can follow <laughs> Joe on Twitter at Falby, F-A-L-B-E-Y. You tweet very occasionally, but you do tweet, uh, and it's always fun to do that. And I'm looking forward to seeing you this weekend at the Northwest Pinball Show. That should be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see Cameron. It's been a while. And uh, then we'll go up and kidnap John Kessler on Friday. I think that's a yeah. good plan. Yeah, yeah. We'll drive back yeah. up and we'll kidnap him. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you guys want to, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at GeekGamerTV. Please do that uh, because you'll know when we're going live for shows or I'm doing a play along or just having some fun at GeekGamerTV on Twitter. Also follow me personally on Twitter at Nunes, N-U-N-E-S. We also have a Facebook community, a Google Plus community. There's many different ways to connect with the show. And also we have our own certified community forums at geekgamer.tv slash forums. We do the show usually on Thursdays. However, because of some scheduling conflicts, we moved the show to Wednesday this week. And next week, it might be on Wednesday. It's probably going to be on Wednesday uh, just because of other scheduling conflicts. So keep your eye on the schedule if you ever want to join us live. And we'll also do a, a neat show on Sundays called Geek Gamer Weekly where we do play-alongs, talk about pinball, uh, how-tos, the whole fun stuff that we do there so mr joe i think that is it for episode number 78 we're getting closer and closer to 80 you know what that means right joe i think it's time to start asking people for suggestions for level eight level ups right We, we, we got one well no that's not a good one sorry i don't like that one i'm not a joe wannabe i'm a chase wannabe wait no forget it I'm done. Whatever. Yeah. For Mr. Joseph Falby. Wait, am I pointing the right way? No. For Mr. Joseph Falby, my name is Chase Nose. Thanks you for walking, watching, and living, walking. I, I'm I'm done. Keep digging, everybody. <laughs>